Honorable Member for Niagara West Glanbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak on our economy and our government's economic action plan. The current state and the future direction of the Canadian economy is of great interest and concern to all Canadians. The Canadian economy has weathered the financial storm, avoided recession, and prevented job losses on the level we have seen in our neighbour to the south. The strength and the stability of the Canadian economy speaks for itself. Its fortitude is a reflection of the industrious spirit of Canadian commerce and the integrity of Canadian values. I am proud of the hard work and the commitment this government has made to foster strong, sustainable, long-term economic growth and the creation of high-quality, value-added jobs for Canadians. The Minister of Finance assured Canadians that our government is striking the right balance between returning to budget balance, uh, b uh, balanced budgets over the medium term and continuing to invest in the key drivers of economic growth and job creation. Today, I would like to remind the House of this government's commitment to creating jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity. We are achieving these goals by new programs and increasing funding for research and development, negotiating new trade deals with other governments, as well as continuing to work with our neighbour and largest trading partner in the United States. Introducing new immigration policy, attracting qualified and capable newcomers, and investing in small and medium-sized businesses, lowering corporate tax rates to encourage development in existing companies and attract responsible foreign investment. All these strategies aim to promote sustainable growth in the medium and long term. These are economic priorities of this government, which I want to further explain and expand on today. An economy's growth potential is measured by the innovation and development of its industries. Without new ideas and new markets, an economy will struggle and stagnate. In Canada, we are proud to have industries, businesses, and entrepreneurs that are forward-thinking, focused on expanding new into new and emerging markets, research and development that plays a crucial role in the success or failure of new programs or products. This is why this government has optimized federal spending of research and development to stimulate and innovative and create economic opportunities in Canada. This government contributed $29.9 billion in funding to support R&D last year, an increase of 2 percent on the year before. Following the recommendations of the Jenkins report, this government invested $1.1 billion to directly support R&D and $500 million for venture capital. Our government's economic action plan is committed to the success of Canadian entrepreneurs, innovators and world-class researchers. Following the recommendations outlined in the report, Innovation Canada, a call to action, our government implemented strategies to help innovate businesses grow into larger, globally competitive companies. One of these key strategies is to shift resources from indirect support to the Scientific Research and Experimental Development Tax Incentive Program, or SHRED, to direct forms of support, including the Industrial Research Assistant Program. This program will receive an additional $110 million per year, doubling the support for small and medium-sized businesses and creating high-value jobs. The Industrial Research Assistance Program is a cornerstone of Canada's innovation system and is regarded worldwide as one of the best programs of its kind. Canada remains a world leader in R&D. We are one of the top 10 countries in the world for R&D investment, contributed a 1.8% of GDP. Our government recognizes the important role research and development plays in the success of entrepreneurs, innovative businesses, and world-class researchers. We are determined to see their continued success in the years to come. In keeping with our government's uh, economic action plan for investment, we are also focused on reducing the impediments to growth. It's no secret that red tape restricts economic growth and erodes public trust. That is why we are committed to removing bureaucratic obstacles to businesses' efforts to creating jobs and growth. Fulfilling a budget 2010 pledge, our government established the Red Tape Reduction Commission, which I proudly took part in. The commission was tasked with formulating recommendations to reduce irritants to business that affect productivity, competitiveness, and innovation. An example of this was the implementation of the one-for-one -one rule. The rule stipulates that every time the government adopts a new rule, it must eliminate an existing one. This balanced approach to business regulation has received wide support from small and medium-sized businesses across the country. We are committed to delivering better regulations that reduce obstacles, lower costs, and promote growth for Canadian businesses. While small and medium-sized businesses form the backbone of the Canadian economy, corporations are equal contributors to creating jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity in Canada. Our government's economic action plan has introduced broad-based tax reductions for promoting investment and growth 
across the Canadian economy. We are delivering more than $60 billion of tax relief to job creating businesses through a six year fiscal plan. To better support businesses, investment, and improve productivity, this government's reduced the federal general corporate tax income tax rate to 15% on January 1, 2012, from 22% in 2007. Reducing corporate taxes and removing obstacles for foreign investment will spur the Canadian economy forward. These improvements are already producing results. Lower general corporate taxes have increased the rate of return on investment and reduced costs, provided businesses with stronger incentives to invest and hire in Canada. Canada leads the G7 with the lowest overall tax rate on new business investment. Our proven policies have been recognized by Forbes magazine. In 2011, Forbes magazine featured the best countries for business. Canada is the number one jurisdiction for conducting businesses among the 134 countries studied. This article is high praise. Keeping taxes low and providing the right incentives for Canada, Canadian businesses is a cornerstone of this government's long-term plan for jobs, growth and prosperity. International trade and foreign investment continues to be high priorities. Canada has continued to grow and prosper. We need strong, reliable trade partners, partners who will invest in Canada industry while encouraging Canadian investment in their own. These are partnerships this, Canadian, uh, this government has forged and will continue to build on. We are pursuing the most ambitious trade expansion in Canadian history. We are committed to creating the right conditions for Canadian businesses to compete internationally and in a new and emerging markets. Canada's Foreign Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement, or FIPA, with China will provide stronger protection for Canadians investing in China and facilitate the creation of jobs and economic growth here at home. This is exactly the trade partnership Canada business and venture capitals need to grow and expand. This treaty is designed to protect Canadian investors in China through stable, predictable rules and protection against discriminatory and arbitrary practices. Despite the baseless claims made by members of the opposition parties, this treaty does not produce a net benefit to Canadian industry. This government's pro-trade plan is opening new doors for Canadian businesses and provides important benefits for Canadians investors. In addition to forging new partnership, this government is sitting down with old friends in the European Union to establish a new trade agreement. The Canadian Europe Comprehensive and Economic Trade Agreement promises to be a uh, cooperative and valuable partnership. The agreement mirrors NAFTA but is considerably more ambitious and more lucrative. In recent study produced by the Canada Joint EU Committee, it was found that a new agreement could boost Canada's GDP by $12 billion annually and increase bilateral trade by 20%. To put that in perspective for the House and for Canadians, that's equivalent to creating almost 80,000 new jobs or adding $1,000 to the average Canadian family's income. Trade agreements aim at creating jobs in high growth industries such as resource development, agriculture production, high tech manufacturing and global finance. These are important markets with high growth potential. Their success will have a direct impact on the infrastructure, development and the success of communities across this country. The beauty of CETA is that it will enhance trade out alliances and corporate partnerships in markets throughout the provinces and territories. We all stand to profit from this treaty. The negotiations with the European Union are the most transparent and collaborative trade negotiations ever undergone in Canada. All levels of government recognize the economic benefits this agreement would bring to all regions of Canada. The EU, old hold, the EU holds tremendous opportunity for Canadian workers and businesses. The EU market includes 500 million people, an annual economic activity of over $17 trillion. The European Union is Canada's second largest trade and investment partner behind only the United States. Canada's prosperity and Canadian's prosperity and standard of living depend on these trade agreements and this government is committed to seeing them all realized. There are other things that I wanted to talk to, but I see I'm running, uh, running low on time, so I will just uh, uh, move, uh, move towards the end of my presentation here. Uh, we believe that the federal skills program uh, worker will be aimed to better recognize younger immigrants with Canadian work experience and better language skills. That is something that we want to look at. Another major section of the Canadian immigration system to be improved is the pan-Canadian fr framework for the assessment and recognizing, uh, recognition of foreign qualifications. And so this is a system that's important as we move forward as well, as we attract new people to help with the jobs that we're going to continue to have. 
And I just want to summarize by saying this government's economic action plan is, and its vision are clear. We are committing to forestry strong, sustainable, long-term economic growth and the creation of high-quality, value-added jobs for Canadians. Canadians have placed their trust and financial interest in the hands of our government. We are dedicated to delivering on all their expectations strong, fiscally responsible governance focused on creating jobs, growth and long-term prosperity. That's the Conservative vision that will produce results and that is what we have and it was in the best interest of all Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question commentary. Uh, député de Vaudreuil, Soulange. Merci, Monsieur le Président. You know, there's something else that Forbes says. It's that uh, there's something fundamentally unfair about government that takes away so much of people's money, power, and personal control while telling them life will be better as a result. And I think uh, this budget is a good demonstration of that. Uh, my, my question to the Honourable Member would be that uh, would he support, say, perhaps taking the $1.3 billion in taxpayers' money that's given to the fossil fuel industry, uh, shift it towards renewables, and create 18,000 jobs as a result, uh, as outlined in the Blue-Green report that just came out a couple of days ago? Honourable Member for Niagara West, Glanbrook. I want to thank uh, my honourable colleague for the question. I think that's one of the... Uh, uh, one of the great things this government has done, not only have we continued to make sure that we, we are able to use and uh, explore the resources we have here in Canada, and I might add that uh, we, we continually look at ways to improve that, and companies are doing that now so that there's less of a footprint, and I think that speaks well for what our resource sector is doing, but we've also committed dollars as well to the renewable sector, and I don't think there needs to be an either-or. I think we could do both. I think we need to be proud of the fact that we have a great resource base in this country. We need to continue to use that, but we can also look for other methods as well as we have done. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm wondering if the Member would recognize that uh, what we're really talking about today is this massive uh, budget bill, which has a profound impact on several pieces of legislation. Uh, it's, it's historical in the sense of the size and the magnitude and the number of changes the government's bringing through, and he makes reference to the European Union. And one of the obligations out of this budget bill is going to be that people that live in the European Union are now going to have to go online in order to, to get a, a form which then allows them to come into Canada, which is a fairly significant change. I don't know if he was made aware of that or if the caucus was made aware of it. But does he not think that uh, debates of, of that nature, when you change laws to that degree, that it would have been better to have had as a separate piece of legislation as opposed to bringing it in through a budget implementation bill? For Niagara West, Glanbrook. And I want to thank my, uh, my colleague from uh, Winnipeg North for the question. I know that uh, as uh, we look at and some of the things I talked about, and I realize 10 minutes is really not uh, adequate time to talk about all the things this government is doing, uh, I think that we have to look at that, uh, the pieces. We've talked about working with trade deals. We've talked about dealing with immigration issues. We've talked about research and development. We've talked about lower taxes. It's all these things working together, and the immigration piece is, is one of those pieces and how we, we welcome uh, people to Canada and, and the kinds of people we welcome. That is the important piece of what makes this uh, economic action plan so important, is all the pieces working together so that we can have a strong and coherent strategy. Some comments. The Honourable Member, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague from uh, Niagara West, uh, Glanbrook, for an excellent speech. And it really highlights the difference between the government's plan and the opposition plan, because we've seen absolutely no plan from the opposition. And what's really scary, I think you've heard about the NDP's $21.5 billion carbon tax, but if you look at their unfunded promises, there are $56 billion of unfunded promises. So I wanted to ask the member because he's very knowledgeable about fiscal uh, responsibilities. Where does he think that the NDP is going to get the money for this $56 billion? Because when I add it up, a $21 billion uh, carbon tax only pays for a certain amount of it. Where are they going to get the rest of that money? For Niagara West, Glanbrook. And I want to thank uh, my colleague from, uh, from Oshawa for, for, the, uh, for the question. I think that's, uh, that's one of the things that uh, we've heard a little bit about here in the House, about this $21 billion carbon tax. We understand that uh, they don't want to uh, su suggest that they're actually going to have to collect taxes for this, but I'm not sure how else they were going to pay for all these programs. And so if we look at it, uh, I know they talk about uh, our government looking at this in 2008, but I, 
since 2000, you know, here we are in 2012, we haven't seen that. So obviously that wasn't part of our plan. So I would suggest that uh, taxes will need to be raised to pay for all these things. And it's unfortunate that uh, what will happen will be that it will be hardworking Canadians that have to pay for all these additional taxes.